Hey guys, welcome back. Reese and Ben here with Pursuing the Natalie Arts. Uh, today, we uh, are going to work through some maintenance. We've got some events coming up here uh, here soon, and uh, we want to look good. So, uh, fortunately, we, uh, we 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 lacked uh, lacked discipline. <laughs> lacked discipline. Uh, last few practices, it's been really hot and humid, and uh, we did not clean our stuff afterwards. So. We paid for it, and uh, thus our kit doesn't look as good as it, it does. So um, we're going to kind of run through uh, what we do, how we maintain our stuff. Uh, today we're focusing on Ben's harness because he's got more of a scent finish, and uh, it's uh, rusty. It's, it's pretty rusty. So uh, since mine's blackened, um, I have a little bit of rust. I, I unfortunately left my helmet outside for the entire night, and uh, has nice uh, collection of rust on it. So I've got to we take the, the, the blackening off there and then redo the blackening. So I'll do a separate video on that covering my harness. But um, but uh, yeah, we're, uh, we've are got some really cool events coming up. Um, so yeah, uh, our, uh, our friend uh, Josh Warren from the Broken Arm Academy of Swordsmanship is having a passage of arms of 40 for 40. It's his 40th birthday. Happy birthday, Josh. <laughs> um, we're going to go beat the crap out of him for it. So that'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, he, he asked for it too. So he asked for it. He's, he set this up. He's going to take 40, 40 individual fights for the day. Uh, so that'll be a that'll be a fun thing um, that's coming up. And then the next event we have after that, uh, we've got days and nights, October through the eighth. Um, this is a living history event uh, primarily, but uh, they will have a passage of arms. Uh, this will be my third time uh, doing that uh, event. Uh, but this year uh, they don't have jousters, so we're going to be the main guys for the event. So. Uh, lots of material for that coming up. Uh, we're going to meet up with our friend Tom Bilter. Uh, he, he's the one that's making uh, historical mail. Um, we've got uh, some of the guys. Bob Charette will be out there. We'll do a video with him again, uh, covering some more structure and stuff. And uh, then, uh, you know, talking with the guys, we'll do some interviews and then we'll uh, try to talk with Ian Laspina a little bit. Yeah, going to meet up with Ian Laspina from uh, Night, Night Errant um, and uh, about the event and hopefully maybe show him a thing or two. Uh, what we've been working through mm -hmm. and uh, so it should be a really good time so um, we uh, we want to make sure we look good for the event so we're going to do some maintenance on the harness and if you get out to the event uh, if you're in Kentucky on that day uh, we're, uh, we're with the uh, 15th century encampment uh, we'll be displaying a military camp with the company of the axe and it's uh, portraying a free company that's uh, on on Rome you know looking around for uh, stuff to do and uh, that'll be an interesting thing. And you'll probably hear us uh, shout out a few times during the day. Routier. Routier, yeah. So we'll be doing a display of a free company on campaign. So uh, not only will you guys get the chance to see us fight out there, uh, but we get to, uh, you know, kind of educate the public on uh, what a campaign and stuff, what a company would look like on campaign. So it should be a lot of fun. So uh, I guess all that's left is uh, just some some elbow grease. Elbow and grease, yeah. Some, uh, some, and some actual grease. Yeah, so, all right, we'll get to it now. All right, uh, for cleaning, we did some disassembly. Uh, we've removed the fault from my, my breastplate. As you can see, uh, my breastplate is a globo shape. It is actually, uh, basically, the Sherberg S18 was made from an earlier uh, breastplate, it was modified uh, to a more modern style. Uh, as you can see, this fits my uh, natural waist. Here, just above my belly button and that allows me to be able to bend over and all that without getting choked out by my breastplate so we will uh, go ahead and uh, get to cleaning on this all right well, uh, for cleaning we're gonna be used a couple different products uh, we've got a WD-40 brand silicone uh, oil it doesn't matter what kind of uh, brand it is or whatever uh, some people prefer silicone some people prefer natural dinosaur oils uh, I don't really have a preference at this point. I've used both and neither seem to do as a better job than the other. Um, for getting rid of some of the rust, we're going to use Rostoff, which is a uh, Worth product. It's pretty expensive. The only reason I've got this is because the bike shop. Uh, we used it and that's the only reason I've got it. Uh, otherwise, I'd find something else. Uh, it works well, though. Uh, then we're going to be using uh, scotch Bright Red Abrasive Pads. Uh, I don't know the grit. They're just uh, they're red. Um, it makes a nice satin finish here. Uh, it also is fairly aggressive, so the rust comes off with it pretty well. We're also going to be using some steel wool, um, a triple lot, um, steel wool, triple or double lot, I can't remember which one that is. But it's enough to take the rust off without really digging too much into the metal. Alright. So right here we're trying the uh, steel wool first because it's the least aggressive. 
uh, you can see that it's taking the rust off, but it's the stains are not coming off, so it's leaving this uh, this film uh, the the dark staining on the metal behind. Uh, so we'll have to use something more aggressive to actually take the surface of the metal down a little and remove that staining. That's when we'll switch over to the Scotch Brite pads, and I'm going to tear a piece off. Now in, uh, in period they would have used a uh, abrasive sand, different grits of abrasive uh, powder, and then they would have uh, put it on a stick, uh, or used a stick, possibly with a piece of leather or cloth wrapped around it to help hold the powder, and they would have rubbed uh, the metal that way, and then progressively changed grits to uh, achieve a polish, unless they were fortunate enough to have a water wheel and run a belt to do it for them. As you can see, the, the Scotch-Brite tends to uh, make a lot quicker work for things. Uh, it's still going to have some staining that I'll just probably have to live with unless I really want to get crazy. Alright, I, I only do linear scratches. Uh, when I polish, I don't do circles. Uh, from polishing motorcycles, and doing and polishing paint with by hand, you find uh, circular scratches show up to the naked eye really well because it casts light at angles. Uh, linear scratches, uh, your your eye does not catch that uh, as well. Uh, not to mention in, in period when they're using a stick to scrub, they would be scrubbing in a straight line. They'd just be burnishing back and forth more than likely. All right, so we've been at this uh, for about uh, 30 minutes or so, and uh, it's already looking a hundred times better. Um, but uh, moral of the story is just take care of your stuff after doing you know whatever you're doing. So learn from our mistakes and don't don't slack off because uh, we've uh, we've now got some uh, permanent kind of pitting in here, and it's going to take a lot more work um, to get that out of there. Probably a polishing wheel. All right, now next is the uh, front fold. So you see you got some uh, nasty pitting and stuff at the the bottom lame. The fold will definitely. Need to give that some love. Got lots of scratches and stuff on there as well. As well. So this uh, the the Scotch Brite pads uh, help with the scratching, uh, getting that out, kind of evening it up. So. All right. So now we just uh, wrapped up uh, doing the the bottom fold, the front fold. And uh, as you see, it looks a whole lot better. Um, put a lot of elbow grease in this one. Had lots of uh, beads of, of moisture and stuff come down through here. And uh, just uh, some insight, uh, you know, there's going to be stuff underneath this as well. So it's important to whatever articulation you've got, uh, try to get in uh, underneath here as well. So that will make, uh, make things a lot easier in the road. Alright, so now we're doing the uh, the back plate and the lower fold. Uh, thankfully, this is not uh, that bad as the front, uh, but we got uh, the the rust spots we do have is just from uh, people handling it. So up near the uh, the straps and the buckles, up here in the, the shoulder as well and the, the side. So just gonna touch us touch us up with some uh, some elbow grease and move on to the next piece. So uh, when we're uh, we're bouting and stuff, doing our thing, uh, I often will throw Ben in the grass. So uh, see nice driplets of uh, just where moisture is from him laying on his knee, uh, rolling around. And got a big, big old blot of rust there. So we're gonna we're gonna put some elbow grease and some more love in this guy. There was that uh, rust spot that was there before. Can't even tell us there now. So, all 
All right, so now uh, we're gonna be doing the uh, Ben's Art Met. So I uh, got a lot of uh, just various spots of rust up the top of the uh, the docular is. Um, since this guy has the hinge pieces here of the uh, opens up there, I got a lot of my fingerprints through here. Um, so just you know, basically just kind of handling it, type of uh, rust you can expect. So um, we'll be. Uh, Hitting this guy next, so. Let's roll that on the other side. Uh, definitely would have been more beneficial to have done this. Uh, prior before. to before now, so uh, typically, you know, we recommend you uh, oil it down your your harness after you're using it. So, yeah. we're going to try a formulation out that we've uh, read in some. Uh, oh, what was it inventories where they had large quantities of beeswax and uh, olive oil? And uh, we're going to try to make a olive oil beeswax concoction and see if that does any better job protecting the armor. I've heard of people heating their armor and rubbing beeswax directly to it, basically waxing it. Uh, so hopefully that will uh, provide a little more protection to make this a little less, less of a hassle. <laughs> this part's kind of tricky because uh, these these guys up here, this picket fence is actually kind of sharp. So Ben cut his uh, finger up pretty good just by handling it. So uh, going back and forth, forth in this uh, motion uh, with a scotch sprite is uh, a bit risky. Hazardous to say the least. And uh, one benefit of the uh, Ben's Armet uh, with the Italian style is you got these uh, hinges on the side there. Those are actually really handy for maintenance. So we're gonna hit this uh, top part of the helmet there, just kind of moves out of the way, and then we'll uh, start hand up here. So uh, I'm trying to be careful not to uh, braid my uh, laces that hold my liner in, so that uh, it doesn't fall out on me unexpectedly. That was fun. Uh, lots of scrubbing, lots of elbow grease, some sweat, some tears. Got uh, got his harness back up to uh, sort of where it used to be. Um, still got some some you know pitting within the metal. Uh, best thing with that is you know potentially just a deep polish. Yeah. That prevent a lot of that. Um, but you know just gotta keep on top of your stuff. So uh, don't do what we did and wait a week and a half to do it. Yeah. And that, that's, a, that's what will happen, your, your kit will look like that. So, But uh, yeah, um, I think it turned out pretty well. Um, you even got a lot of the scratches out of the surface of the, of the armor, so that was kind of nice. So you can see all the, uh, all the damage I've done over, over the course of a year. So um, yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys find this uh, useful. 
uh, we get asked a lot on uh, what we use to, uh, you know, keep maintain, you know, maintenance on our armor and stuff. Uh, with my blackening, of course, I don't have to worry about that as much. But uh, like I said earlier in the video, I did leave it out overnight. So now I have to completely uh, undo the, the bluing, the blackening, and then re-blue it. So I'll do a video on that uh, sometime in the future. And uh, so, but yeah, we should be looking uh, pretty spiffy, hopefully, uh, for this uh, this coming weekend, for the, the passage of arms, the 40, 40, 40 and um, then days and nights up next. So I uh, expect to see lots of uh, content soon of uh, some more action. So you guys have been asking that for that for probably the start of the video series. So uh, we'll, you'll finally get to see some free play. So, um, but yeah, if you guys have any uh, questions, uh, Feel free to uh, ask them below. Uh, totally willing to see what it, what maybe you guys used uh, to help prevent uh, rust for your your kids. So, um, but yeah, like like always, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. He's wax block. All natural.